Mr. Holland, on November 22nd, where were you? November the 22nd, I was standing on top of the triple underpass, waiting for the parade and the president's car. I arrived about uh, 11.45 or close to noon. Uh, two policemen was talking to me and asked me, one of them asked me, if I would come back up there and identify the people that had any business or had a right to be up there. They would be railroad employees? They'd be railroad employees, and I told him I would. And what, what was your position with the railroad company? Uh, track and signal supervisor for the Union Terminal Railroad. I put in 41 years of railroad service in the signal park. Did you look in any particular direction when you heard the shots? Yes. I looked over to where I thought shot came from and I saw a puff of smoke still lingering underneath the trees in front of the wooden fence. The report sounded like it came from behind the wooden fence and a policeman throwed his motorcycle down in the middle of the street and run up the embankment with his pistol drawn. He was running toward that particular spot. And also another pol uh, motorcycle policeman right behind him tried to ride up the embankment on his motorcycle and it turned over about halfway up the embankment. And he got out, he got off his motorcycle and left it laying there and run on over to the fence with his gun in his hand. Where do you think the shots came from? Well, I know where that third shot came from. Where did that shot come from? Behind the picket fence. Is there any... Close to the little plaza. Is there any doubt in your mind that that shot came from behind the There's fence? no doubt in my mind. There's no doubt whatsoever in my mind in the statement that I made to, in the sheriff's office immediately after the shooting and the statement that I made to the Warren Commission. And I made it very plain there was no doubt in my mind what there was definitely a shot fired from behind that picket fence. I made it plain to the Warren Commission, and I think I made the same statement in the Sheriff's Office. There was a fourth shot. On November 22nd, Mr. Holland, did you tell the sheriff's office in an affidavit you signed that day that you saw a puff of smoke come from behind the picket fence i am certain i did was was it the general feeling would you say mr holland among the police officers and others at the moment that the shots were fired that some at least one shot came from behind that wooden fence there's about six or eight of us boys from the union terminal run around there to find some evidence that there was someone around there. Certainly the ones that was with me that run around that fence uh, realized what was happening. They told me the same thing that I told you, that there was definitely a shot fired, and they saw the smoke. We just all started running around that fence as a unit. Is this the exact spot you were standing on on November 22nd, Mr. Holland? That's correct. This is the exact spot that I was standing on November the 22nd, waiting for the parade. And where did you hear that third shot come from? Right over about 20 or 30 feet from the other end of that little picket fence. And where was the smoke that you saw? It drifted right out underneath those green trees, those two trees. From behind the fence? From behind the fence. It kind of hung there just like a, for a few seconds, long enough that you could see that it was. And then what did you do? And then what did you do? Immediately after the... President's car came underneath this 
overpass, a four of us broke a run around this fence to find out if we could see anybody leaving the air. Can we walk this way now that uh, you went on the 22nd? No, we can walk that way right now. Fine. trying to see what we could see and this was the direction you walked on the 22nd this was the direction I made this right turn Jumped this steam pipe. line, this pipe, and one man right behind me jumped, and another one jumped right on top of him. Fell on top of him? Fell on top of him. And were there more cars here on the 22nd than there are today? They were bumper to bumper. It's just a sea of cars. You couldn't hardly get through them. We were jumping over the bumpers, over the hood of the cars, to work our way to the spot that we saw the smoke and heard the shot. And then we came up to the wooden fence. Mr. Holland, did you remain behind here for a while when the police officers were searching the area? Approximately 15 minutes before I had to go back to my office. There was about 40 or 50 uh, people around here searching. And what did you find here? A lot of footprints behind this car, mud on the bumpers, and I looked around to see if I could find some empty shells or any evidence of a shot being fired and a bullet shell rejected from the gun. And this is where I saw the smoke from the third shot. Right drifting out around here? Just drifting out underneath these trees. And when that shot hit the president, as he passed by this lamppost, did you see the effect of the shot upon the president? Well, it knocked him over to his left, down in the car. Away from here? Away from here. About where was he in relation, where was the car, the presidential limousine, in relation to the lamppost? Uh, just a little to the left of that lamppost we're looking at. In effect, Mr. Holland, the Warren Commission published just a very small portion of your testimony and used your testimony as proof that no shots could have come from behind the fence. Did they accurately and fairly use your testimony? They are wrong because my testimony, and I made it very clear, that there was a fourth shot fired and one of those shots came from behind that picket fence. And there's no doubt in my mind I never will be, because I was on the spot. I saw the smoke, heard the report, and saw the smoke from behind that fence. And I don't see how that they could doubt there was a four shot fire. The vast majority of the witnesses who expressed an opinion as to the origin of the shots agreed with Mr. Holland that the shot did come from behind the fence. These witnesses, as this picture shows, were positioned throughout Dealey Plaza. The commission concluded that no credible evidence suggests that the shots were fired from any place other than the Texas School Book Depository building. Mr. Holland, you were on the overpass you were probably in the best position of any witness on November 22nd. In your view, did the Warren Commission present all of the facts regarding the assassination of President Kennedy? Well, let me say this. Uh, the Warren Commission, I think, had to report in their book what they 
wanted the world to believe when they read the Warren Commission. As you know, as well as I know, that uh, everybody in the world was reading this Warren Commission and it had to read like they wanted it to read. They had to prove that Oswald did it alone. The commission also stated, as you know, Mr. Holland, that the same bullet which hit Governor Connolly first struck President Kennedy. Based upon what you observed from that position just above the street on the overpass, is that possible? No. No, that Warren Commission is in error on that because I was an eyewitness to that and I know that the same bullet that hit President Kennedy did not hit Governor Conley. The first bullet, the president slumped over and Governor Conley made his turn to the right and then back to the left that's when the second shot was fired and knocked him down in the floorboard. And it would have been impossible for him to turn had the bullet hit, the same bullet hit him that went through the president's neck. And did you see the, see the effect of the next bullet which struck President Kennedy? I saw the effects of the next bullet that struck the president. Because it flipped him over almost on his stomach and the side of his head and his head was laying on the edge of the seat. He was laying more on his stomach and his foot was hanging out of the, over the car, edge of the car, upside down. 